Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to another video tutorial from Enlist Q. In this video tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to run a KDB Plus database instance on AWS. Yes, just recently, actually just yesterday, KX announced that you are now able to run KDB directly on AWS without having to do anything. So if you remember, in the past um, few months ago, they uh, opened up KDB on GCP. So we actually have a tutorial for that as well uh, right here. If you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see um, we did a video a few weeks ago running KDB Plus database on Google Cloud. So that's already there. And, you know, a lot of people use AWS and their companies or personally. So it's nice that um, just yesterday they announced you can do that. You can run KDB instance on uh, AWS now. And it's super easy. And I'm just going to go over how you can do that and start playing around with KDB uh, on the cloud. First of all, you go to AWS Marketplace. That's aws.amazon.com slash marketplace. And all you have to do is search for KX here. You'll see there's only one option available, at least right now. Um, click on KDB Plus. And here's a page with all the information for KDB on AWS. You'll see that the latest version is uh, 3.6. You can see the typical uh, pricing, it's $1.5 per hour. Then uh, you can see some more details about the product itself. If you've worked with um, KDB before, there's not much uh, you can learn from here. So uh, you can forget about this and some highlights of the KDB. Then really this is the important part, pricing information. I don't have too much information about what the current pricing model is with KDB. Um, I used the enterprise version a while back, a few years ago. At my previous company so I've, I'm not fully sure how it has evolved in the last few years I think it has gotten a little cheaper and much more flexible so um, if you look at these numbers right so to spin up an instance these are some estimates to spin up an EC2 instance with KDB on it uh, in Virginia with a 64-bit Amazon machine image you'll see that it'll cost you about 1.5 dollars per hour and that's with the lowest tier of EC2 instance. So that's T2.small with, you get two gigabytes of memory, one virtual core CPU, uh, EBS, elastic block storage only, and networking is low to moderate. And then you'll see the cost, the software cost, which is the KDB cost is $1.5 per hour. The, the EC2 cost where KDB will be running is $0.023 per hour, and which makes the total cost to 1.523 dollars per hour so not that much uh, for the basic instance if you just wanted to play around uh, like I am for this tutorial uh, this is the way to go you can see it's also vendor recommended but there are all these other tiers as well that Amazon provides you with and you can see that the cost changes according to that so if you look at um, let's look at m4.4x large you'll see the memory has increased to 64 gigs now CPU is better uh, has 16 virtual cores and um, the network is high and the cost is now total cost is 10.8 dollars per hour uh, now let's go to the most extreme case if you're doing something crazy z 1d.12 x large now that has 384 gigs of memory with 48 virtual cores and you'll see uh, some more details about the storage itself and then um, more details about the network as well that you get. So the cost is now $28.464 per hour. Um, it sort of looks like $28,464, but that's not the case. This is a period, a dot, not a column, uh, not a comma. So thank, thank God for that. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it was interesting to see these numbers because uh, I'm not too familiar with the latest pricing model that uh, KX follows. So it looks very, um, if you're just doing burst processing, it looks pretty manageable to me. Of course, depending on the usage, um, you can see how much you're looking to spend. Some more information about the usage here. You can take a look at it later. You can use, uh, this is just for how you can log into your console. And then some typical support information on how you can get help if you need something. That's it. So 
the way um, I've never used uh, AWS Marketplace before, so the, so this is new to me as well. So the way you would go on having KDB on your AC2 instances, you had to subscribe to this. It doesn't seem like there's an additional cost for that, um, as far as I know. So let's see, so there's just user agreement. Again, they're highlighting the cost for you of the software. It's per hour, okay. So I'll accept the terms. And then it's waiting to uh, for me to subscribe. So give it a few seconds. Let's see how that goes. You can look at some details here. Okay, that's the same thing as before. Hide it. So it took about 10, 12 seconds. And you'll see that the effective date is as of today, February 8, 2019. And there's no expiry date here, which is good, I guess. Um, maybe they'll change that later on. But for now, it seems like you subscribe to this product and it just is there forever. Okay, so now then you go continue to sub configuration. And here you can configure what kind of uh, EC2 instance you want. Um, so here we're just going to go for a 64-bit uh, image. KDB version is only 3.6 is available. Region is, we'll pick East. Um, okay, continue to launch. And here you can uh, pick the type of EC2 instance you want. So we'll continue with launch, launch from the website, that's fine. And then um, the EC2 instance here, see you have all the options available. We're gonna stick with the the cheapest one t2.small and you can see the details here vpc settings will keep them to default subnet settings keep them to default security group keep it as it is key pair settings i already have one created you can create a key pair um, going here if you need to actually let's create a new key pair just to show how it works in case you don't have uh, prior aws experience so we'll create a key pair, key pair name, KDB AWS tutorial, create, and it downloads it, um, the key pair to your downloads directory or wherever you have it configured. So that's it. And then we go back, we can uh, refresh it, and it has our latest key value pair there. So we're going to use that now, and let's say launch. All right, so we have kicked off the EC2 instance to be launched. It, does, it takes a few seconds to actually launch, so we're going to go to our EC2 console where we have a list of all of our EC2 instances running. So I had this from earlier on. I terminated it. So that doesn't exist anymore. Here's the one that the new one that's going to have KDB on it, and it's still getting prepared. So in my experience, it takes about 10 to 20 seconds for it to uh, be up and running. You don't need to refresh this page, it will it will refresh by itself. Okay, so now we see that the instance is running. We can start using it. So if you click on it, you'll get all this information about the instance, IP address, DNS, right? All this stuff, um, which is very useful, but we don't need it right now. We want to connect. So if you click here, connect, you will see these different options that you can um, use to connect to your EC2 instance. So there are two options. One is that you, know, you use SSH to log into your, to connect to your EC2 instance, or you, if you have Java installed properly, you can actually do it from the browser. So first let's do it from the, from our uh, using SSH client. And here are the options of how to do that. So this is the command that we're going to use notice that it references your uh, key value pair so you need to know where that's saved um, mine is saved in my downloads directory so we're going to open up a terminal and downloads i just want to make sure that it's the key value pair is there so it is and then i will run this command copy paste it from here you're gonna SSH into your EC2 instance, which is this server right here, um, as root using this key value pair. So let's try that. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, so something went wrong. So they're not accessible, blah, 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 blah. 
Okay, so to access your instance, now we follow these commands as they are here. Okay, so we need to change, we need to run this command. Okay, and then, all right. So now we can do this. All right, so it's complaining about my username. It's saying use Ubuntu rather than the user root, okay? So instead of root, we're gonna change this to Ubuntu and run that. Perfect, so we are now logged into our AWS instance. As you can see, here's the IP address. And um, I believe that's the IP address. Anyways, <clears throat> so now we can try running Q. And if everything had gone correctly, Q should work right now. It should be installed already and we should be ready to go. There we have it now. As you can see, KDB plus 3.6 version is installed. We didn't have to worry about setting up any environment variables. Uh, we didn't have to worry about installing Conda, then installing KDB through Conda. We didn't have to worry about any licensing. Everything is available to us right now. And let's just, let's write a hello world function or statement Aha, to print hello world. And then let's create a table, right? Usual table, sim, Apple, IBM, Microsoft, price, Hundred, two hundred, three hundred, size ten, twenty, thirty. Okay, then we can do select from T where sim is equal to Apple. Oops. That didn't work. T where sim. wonder what happened previously oh select I had the select statement wrong okay and then select average price from T right okay perfect so everything works as expected let's quit out of it and then we can just exit out of the terminal perfect and then I'm gonna exit out of this as well done now, something important to remember with any time you're using AWS or GCP, any of these cloud instances, right? Remember to turn them off. Remember to shut down your instances that you create. So here we have this instance running. If you don't do that, you can incur a lot of costs and AWS is not responsible for alerting you all the time that your instance is still running or that this is how much cost you've incurred. So you don't wanna get an SD bill at the end of the month or at the end of the week, whatever their cycle is. So make sure to terminate it if you're not using it. And the way you do that is select, so select the EC2 instance, then go to actions, instance state, and then terminate. Don't do stop or reboot, just terminate completely. And we'll ask you for permission and we'll say, if you have some data, then you lose the data, blah, blah, blah. In this case, it's fine. I'm just showing you as a demo. So yes, terminate. And it'll take a few seconds to do that. Okay, so I fast forwarded the video a bit because it took about Think two minutes for it to terminate longer than usual I don't know why but you'll see once it's terminated you'll see the instance state change to terminated so that means we're good to go now okay perfect <clears throat> one thing I would also like to check is that the because we had to subscribe to this to the KDB software I want to make sure that I don't continue to get billed for it somehow so I would like to unsubscribe unless you're you know you want to continue using it later on then you can keep your subscription, but I'm just going to unsubscribe right now. So you can go to your, uh, from here, you can go to your software instances. This is the page um, where you launched the instance. So it has the your software page. You go there. I only have KDB set up right now. So I will cancel my subscription. If you try to do this and you have an EC2 instance that is that has KDB installed on it, it'll tell you, it'll show you here that you know you can't cancel your subscription yet because you're 
right now you're using KDB. So make sure your instances are terminated and then you can cancel your subscription. Perfect. So that's it. So, you know, this saves us from any surprise costs later on. I highly recommend that you do this if you don't have any use case for continually subscribing to KDB. Okay, perfect. So that was it, guys. So you saw how easy it was to spin up a KDB instance. I am completely amazed by how far KDB has come along in the last few months. <clears throat> Maybe, you know, in a, a year and a half or so, you now have embed pi which allows you to run python code you now have kdb plus on demand licensing you now have kdb instances that you can run on gcp and aws really i think kx and first derivatives are doing a great job to make sure that kdb is prepared for your use cases and you know if you're worried about cloud migration you have a way to do that if you're using kdb um, already or if you're a new user and you would like to try out kdb on the cloud so good stuff by them, and um, I'm liking where this is going. If you're in New York, I highly recommend that you attend this meetup. It's called Burst Processing with KDB Plus and Q On Demand. So you'll see it's on Wednesday, February 13th, 2019. There are about 125 people going. I won't be able to go, sadly. I am flying that night, but I highly recommend that you go. It's at AWS Loft, which is um, where AWS does all their events. So it looks like this is a nice collaboration by KDB KX and uh, AWS. So it looks like a great event. You'll have some chance for uh, networking. And then there's some very interesting speakers who will be showing you how you can use KDB Plus on the cloud. And then, of course, free beers. Who doesn't like beers, right? So I highly recommend that you go. It's at AWS Loft, 350 West Broadway on February 13th, 2019, 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. All right, so that's it, guys, for today. As always, if you have any questions, any suggestions, any feedback, let me know, let us know. Email us at himanshu at enlistq.com right here, or you can subscribe to the channel as well and then leave some comments. Hope you like the video. Thank you very much.